Yo guys, how's it going? I came out here today. We will be getting ready to assemble this 2003 Honda CR125 engine. Now today, we will be doing the bottom end. The top end's gonna have to wait for another video because the top end's actually being sent out right now. But uh, yeah, we can work on the bottom end. Pretty much everything's cleaned up and good to go. I know I said I'd make an inspection video, but a lot of the parts are gonna be replaced here. So I'm just gonna kinda make a inspection slash assembly video today. So I'll show you guys what you need to inspect if you are reusing certain things. And uh, yeah, so we have a lot of new parts, a lot of new clutch components, a clutch kit, a hub and basket, and just a lot of miscellaneous stuff, bearings, seals, and a lot of new hardware over here because a lot of our old hardware is corroded. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of work to do today. We'll be knocking out the bottom end. So over here we have our cases. We still need to put the new bearings in. I've already gone through and cleaned everything though because I doubt me cleaning things is very entertaining for you guys. But uh, yeah, here we have our bear cases. Also got some fresh cylinder studs because again, corrosion city. So the very first thing today we have to do is get all these fresh bearings into our cases. And here we have all fresh bearings and seals from a Wrench Rabbit rebuild kit. Super, super handy kit. Comes with pretty much everything you need to rebuild your entire motor. So a good majority of these bearings I will be pressing in using a shop press, and I'll show you guys what that looks like as well. All right, so the way I will be installing these case bearings here is uh, I'm actually gonna be cooling down the bearing and leaving the case here at the ambient temperature. I actually put the bearings in the freezer, and uh, now they're just sitting in some ice just so they can stay cool out here, but I'm just gonna press them in. I already tapped them in a little ways um, just before I put it in here so it already has started into the case. And now I'm just gonna use our press here and just press it in the rest of the way. Uh, every once in a while I'm gonna pull the press up, take it out, inspect it, make sure it's going in evenly, and then press it a little more, take it out, or take the press up, make sure it's going in evenly, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna make sure that this bearing is going in as even as possible. All right, so we got our crank bearing in here. It fit perfectly. This press, guys, is super, super useful to have here because you can press it right in. You know immediately when it's seated and it is even in there. So now we're gonna press in some of our transmission bearings and I'm gonna kind of show you guys a little more in detail what I'm gonna be doing for that. So here, before I even touch the bearing, I'm just gonna get a little bit of oil on my finger, very, very small amount. And I'm just gonna lubricate where the bearing's gonna sit, the outer race here and that'll just help with getting the bearing in, making sure the where the bearing race sits won't get damaged or anything, and it'll just help the bearing kind of glide into place. So here for this bearing, it has like an indent, so that indent's gonna need to face up, so the retainers can kind of bite into that indent, if that makes any sense. Now I'll just drop the bearing on in, and honestly guys, I didn't even have to press that in. Sometimes just cooling the bearing down is enough. And a lot of the times if bearings have retainers, they do fit loosely like that. That's why there's two little retaining spots. But uh, yeah, we were lucky that time. I literally was just able to press it in. But uh, yeah, it's not gonna be like that for everything. So I got my shift drum bearing in place. I just kind of tapped that in with a hammer and worked it in and uh, didn't really need the press or anything. So here I'm gonna install these bearing retainer screws, put some blue thread locker on them and they are Phillips head screws. So there's no, no real need to put a red thread locker on them. We don't really have to torque them down. Again, we have the thread locker on there, so I'm just gonna get them nice and snug, and we'll call that good. And we'll just do the same for the second bolt. Again, we have some blue Loctite on there. Then we'll snug it up pretty good. Definitely don't want these bolts floating around in your transmission. And we're good. So here we're gonna install the right main bearing. Just gonna get a little oil in here to Make sure that bearing can go in nice and easy, doesn't really scar or scratch the surface. Here we're gonna install our bearing with the lettering out. These bearings don't have a whole lot of lettering on them, but the letters that are on them, I'm gonna face outwards. It doesn't really matter. Uh, generally, your main bearings aren't really directional, but I like to face the letters outwards. And it'll probably not wanna go very far. So now I'm just gonna get my bearing driver here, tap it a little bit. I'm gonna check if it's going in evenly. Chances are it's not. Looks like this side's a little raised. So we'll tap the outer race. Make sure we're going in nice and even.
And here for tapping the outer race, I'm just using a socket. That works all right. Another way you can tell if your bearing's going in straight is just getting some calipers. I'm just kind of measuring all the way around the bearing. Right here, 10.7 mil, got 10.4, 11, 10.9. So this right here needs to be tapped in further. And here my objective isn't to fully install the bearing. You can fully install the bearings just by tapping it like this. I've actually done a bottom end before where I did it like that before I had the press. It'll work fine, it's just a whole lot more time consuming. But here my objective is just to get it even, just to prepare it for getting pressed in. All right, now that we have our bearing pretty well started into the case, we can start pressing it. So I have the bearing fully seated, and I know because when I'm pumping on the hydraulic bottle jack here, I'll feel a lot more resistance than the bearing just kind of going in, so I know it's completely seated. That's one good thing about using a press here. You'll know for sure when it's seated, but uh, if you're tapping it in, you'll have a pretty good idea when it's seated as well. Still not sure why this press makes that noise when I release it. All right, so once I have the bearing all the way in, I'll take it off the press. I'll get a little deep socket and just kind of tap on the outer race just to make sure the bearing is fully seated in the case. Alright guys, so we have all the bearings in the cases except for this one right here and this one right here. And unfortunately these bearings that came with the kit that actually go here are like one millimeter oversized so they won't fit right and uh, stock ones do fit fine but I'm not gonna throw the old ones back in there. We're gonna have to order some new OEM Honda bearings. Uh, no big deal, it's just a part of the process. Things will come up. It is what it is, it's fine. But uh, yeah, just, just know whenever you're working on engines or pretty much anything with dirt bikes, Things are gonna come up, little things like this, and uh, you know what, you just kinda gotta shrug it off and get do it right or do it twice kind of thing. So again, I'm not gonna throw in the old bearings because we're rebuilding this whole motor. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get these ordered and I'll update you guys once we have the proper bearings shipped in. All right guys, it is a few days later and we have the bearings we will be using. So here we have a OEM Genuine Honda uh, bearing that is from an OEM parts supplier and over here, uh, what I actually had to do for this bearing is I just searched up the part number on the old bearing and I basically got an identical one that we took out and it lines up and fits perfectly so we will be using that. But over here we have an OEM one, I also have an extra one just in case OEM for some reason doesn't work. But OEM will work because it fits perfectly. Alright guys, now that we have the correct bearings for each case, we'll be pressing them in. I will see you guys right after these bearings are pressed into place. All right, so we got pretty much all the bearings in. I also went in and threw these bearings in for the RC valve, I believe it's called on these Hondas, and the water pump. And now we're gonna go ahead and install the seals. Now some people will put the engine together then install the seals. It's honestly personal preference, but I prefer to put in all the seals. Oh, dropped one. And uh, yeah, so first we will start with our crank seals. So first we will be installing our ignition side crank seal, which goes right here and fits in just like that. So here before we install the seal, I'm gonna install a little bit of engine assembly grease into the seal here on the inside and the outside just to uh, help out with assembly and uh, just make things go in a little bit easier. So here I'm just gonna install this using a little uh, seal installer, bearing seal installer a driver piece with a hammer. So I'm just gonna drive that into place till it's about flush with the case. So here I know the seal is all the way in when I'm uh, kind of driving it in with a hammer and a little seal bearing driver here. Normally when you're driving it in you'll kind of hear a like a dead sound, kind of like that. But once it's all the way in and the driver here is touching the case, you'll hear like more of a metallic uh, ring sound if that makes any sense. Kind of like that. That's how you know our little seal driver here is touching the case and the seal's completely flush 
And of course you want to go all the way around just to make sure it's consistent. And we are good to go on the ignition side, crank seal. All right, so we have our crank seals all done, and now we are moving on to some of the other miscellaneous seals. So here we have our counter shaft seal we need to install, it is right here. Then we have our shift shaft seal right here. Then we have our clutch actuator arm seal, which I have not taken out the old one, but I can do that real quick and pop in our new one. And for all these seals, I have been using this Maxima assembly grease for engines, oil flutable, really good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get on installing some of these seals. And again, gonna be installing these pretty much the same as the crank seals, just gonna be driving them in until they're about flush with the case. And uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so we have all of our bearings and seals in place. Now I'm gonna install our crankshaft, then we're gonna install all of our transmission components over here. And I like to lay our right side case down here because it's like the flattest. If you look on this side, the ignition side, uh, yeah, it's not as flat. So I find the right case, nine times out of 10 is a lot easier to work with. So I'll just lay that down here on my little wooden engine stand so it doesn't damage the aluminum cases. So let's install this crankshaft with a crankshaft installer tool. All right, so now we will be pulling the crank into the case. Now one thing you wanna watch out for is that you're not pulling the rod while it's like this. Otherwise you'll be like kind of bending it to the side and scarring your bearings and um, yeah. So you don't wanna pull it in obviously while your uh, connecting rod is kind of in the way of something. So you wanna make sure you're holding that free and out of the way. The crank should kind of fit in relatively easy and it shouldn't take like super, super hard force. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be using our Tusk crank installer tool. This is a pretty good tool, especially for the money. They're actually pretty cost effective and they work great. They work on quite a few different crankshafts. So uh, I've actually worked on a YZ, I believe in 03 or an 04, 125. And uh, well, same tool for the YZ CR. You know, they're pretty universal. So here we're just gonna pull the crank right on through. And the reason you don't want to hammer on it is because you could mess up the balance because these cranks uh, ideally from the factory are balanced. This one of course is, but uh, yeah, or I should say true. True would be a better word, not balanced. But this crank is true and we don't want to mess any of that up by hammering on it. So yeah, we're just going to be pulling it through. I'm going to stop talking and let's get to work. Again, the whole objective is to get the crank uh, the right side of the crank seated in the bearing without messing up the trueness of this crank. So I'm trying not to let this case like really rest on this side. And it's not really resting actually. It's more resting over here. Kind of hard to show on camera. But I'm basically doing everything I can to make sure this crank stays as true as possible. All right, so you'll know when it's all the way pulled into the bearing when you're turning and you're feeling light resistance and all of a sudden it just doesn't want to move. You don't really want to go too much more than that. Uh, for me, it was light resistance and then now it has stopped in a place, it doesn't want to move. So we know this crank is fully seated into its bearing. We can now simply remove our crank puller tool. There we go guys, our crank is now pulled into the right case and this thing moves like butter, clears, fits everything perfectly. Guys, millimeter clearances, guys. Super impressive that companies nowadays are able to manufacture parts to such tight tolerances to make everything work really well. And spins just super butter, super, super smooth. That's what you wanna see. Now that we have our crank assembly installed, I'm gonna take this opportunity to throw a little bit more transmission oil onto these transmission bearings here before we install our transmission components. And here I'm just using the oil that I will be using in the transmission of this bike upon the assembly. Now I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but the reason the bearings provided with 
the kit didn't work here is because the kit actually was for a 2004 CR. Luckily, the only differences between the 2003 and 4, from my knowledge, um, are these transmission bearings. Uh, for the 2004, for some reason, they were oversized one millimeter now outer diameter. I measured them, and the 2003 ones are just one millimeter smaller for the outer diameter. All right, now we are gonna be trying to install our transmission as a whole assembly if possible. So here I'm just gonna kind of mesh them so they will fit properly. And you can see I have a washer sitting on the bearing to the left, and that is just so I don't really have to hold it in place on the shaft. But yeah, I wanna make sure that gets lined up. Now that we have our transmission in the place, we are going to install our shift forks. Not sure why, but in the last video I was calling these gear dogs, these are shift forks. So here we have one that's marked with an L for left. This one has no marking. Well, I mean, it has an R along with some other stuff, but that's for the right. And this here with the C is actually for the center, front, center, whatever you want to call it. Kind of like the center of the engine. So here, let's align these. We're going to have to kind of play with the gears a little bit and make sure we get these all lined properly. And they should only really fit properly one way. And move that out of the way. But yeah guys, these will for the most part only fit in properly one way, so. Um, but of course if you're not confident, you can always look at pictures you took beforehand, uh, OEM parts fishes, stuff like that to help you get an idea of where everything's supposed to sit. Uh, better be safe than sorry when it comes to this kind of stuff, because let me tell you, having to split the cases multiple times would not be very fun. So here before I line the shift forks into place so we can install these pins, we are gonna throw in this little shift drum here, which just rides on a little hair right there. Just rides on this bearing right here, nice and butter. And now we kind of want to look for like where neutral would be. It's kind of hard to explain, but you just kind of gotta look where you had it beforehand when you tore the engine down. Here we will be able to test it in a minute as well, but let's just get everything aligned in the place here. So here everything is actually set up to be in first gear, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter too much what gear it's in. Uh, preferably first or second, so you can click it in neutral pretty easily. Um, but here, we're just gonna align our shifts, shift forks here, and then we are gonna install these little pins, and then of course, a little bit of oil on these, the transmission oil I'll be using in the bike, and here this is actually just some Yamalube 10W40 all-purpose. It's great transmission oil in my opinion. Throw that into there and it should align nice and easy. Sam goes for the second one generally, uh, unless these have like a recessed edge like this one did, these aren't really directional. But I say generally because that's not always the case. Now here a quick way we can test this before we put the cases together is just because we're in first gear these transmission shafts won't spin independently of each other. But here, you're gonna find neutral, which is halfway up. Here we're gonna hold everything, spin everything a little bit and throw it in neutral. And now, as you can see, this transmission shaft spins independently from this one and vice versa, this one will spin independently. So here I'm not gonna try to force the bike in second or anything, but here I just wanted to demonstrate. We'll click it down a gear real quick. It has to be moving, here's first then these will not spin independently of each other. We'll go one up, or half up. Neutral, spins free, spins free. That is what you wanna see. I'm quickly gonna throw in our dowel pins, and I coated these in a little bit of grease. And you can use anti-seize on these dowel pins as well, but for engines, I tend to just use grease on the uh, dowel pins. It works the same job. And uh, yeah, I personally just use anti-seize when building wheels now. I try and just use grease whenever I can on dowel pins going into the engine here. But there are two locating dowel pins, one right there, one right here. They are both in place. Now we can simply align our gasket. Now that our gasket surface is all clean and whatnot, we'll be careful to align everything. Those should fit right over the dowel pins, just like that. I'll just make sure everything's lining up. Here I need to cut it right here. Then this one will also need to cut as well, but I can do that afterwards. Here the goal is just to line up all the bolt holes and the dowel pins pretty much do that for us. Now for the other side case, the left side case, 
Here I've already gone in and cleaned up the gasket surface and then just same thing as the other side, just threw on a little simple grain on a shop towel, quickly cleaned it off, got any oil residue off. Now we are simply just going to set this on top and try and line some stuff up here. Make sure the counter shaft is lined up, make sure our crank is lined up. Should kind of slide on just like that into, it, into its place. Now of course you're only going to get so far because the crank is only going to let you go on so far. So here I'm going to get our crank installer tool back out and we're going to use that a second time on this side case and we're also going to use a rubber mallet to assist us in putting on this case. So here first we're just trying to align all the bearings before we have any dowel pins to worry about. So the objective here is just to make sure everything is kind of where it needs to be and the bearings and everything that needs to line up in there. Keep pulling, shouldn't be too, too much resistance. Feels good so far. We're just gonna check, make sure we're going on even. And actually, this side, strangely enough, is wanting to go down more than this side for some reason. Normally, it is the other way around, but we're not that far onto the dowel pins or anything yet, so we can't really call anything weirder until we get onto those locating pins. All right, so our cases have completely joined together now, not tightly or anything, but I know that because they have completely squished together our crank installer tool, no longer moves really, I should say, uh, easily, you know, doesn't really want to move at all. And it should be a pretty consistent feel all the way when you're turning it onto the bearing until the very end when it stops on you. That's when you know you're good to go. And the gasket is being somewhat compressed all the way around, so we are looking good. All right, so as you guys saw from the last clip, unfortunately, I did have to split the cases again, and that is because uh, this transmission shaft was a whole lot smaller in diameter than this bearing that was provided with the kit. And I remind you guys, we are building a 2003 Honda CR125 engine out of a kit actually made for 2004. So there are going to be some slightly different bearings, but everything else for crank shaft and crank bearings is the same. Unfortunately, that was just one of those bearings, again, uh, that went unnoticed. So uh, yeah, I got a new one, OEM one, is actually a few days later from the last clip you guys saw. And uh, yeah, if I can get this to focus, maybe. I have a brand new Honda OEM bearing here. So all we got to do is remove these two little retainers. Pull the old bearing out, put our correctly fitting one in, and I also bought a counter shaft seal kit from Tusk, which comes with a new seal and spacer and whatnot. So we're also going to have to replace our counter shaft seal. And uh, yeah, let's get that done real quick. All right guys, so we have our counter shaft bearing and seal all fixed, everything is good to go, right, OEM parts, and uh, yeah, let's finally put these cases back together, hopefully this time for good. So here I'm just gonna line everything up again. There we go, that's as far as we can just kinda push everything on. Here I'm just gonna get a mallet and give it a few taps. And there we go, it's come to a stop. That's as far as the puller wants to pull. And it looks like the cases are now together. And real quick, I'm gonna remove our crankshaft puller installer tool. And now that we have the cases kind of put together without any bolts in it, I'm gonna quickly give the shafts all a quick turn, uh, especially the transmission shafts. Here we're gonna check for play. Uh, that has like little to no play. 
over here. A little bit back and forth, that's all right, but pretty much no up and down play. And then of course the crank feels super good. So everything feels good to go. We are now going to put all of our case bolts in and begin tightening this motor down and uh, tightening the cases, kind of crushing the case gasket here because these Hondas obviously have case gaskets. The Yamahas use a liquid gasket maker, but uh, the, ca the case gasket is a little bit cleaner. Uh, so that's one good thing about it. But yeah, let's start bolting these cases together. So here I'm gonna begin installing all of our case bolts. Now as you guys can see, I don't really have them organized. I literally have all of our case bolts in my hand here. And the way I kind of figure out which ones go where is I'll generally start with the longest ones. So this one right here is actually the longest one. And I'll just go through all the bolt holes and feel kind of which one. As you can see, that one has a whole lot of space. So this bolt won't be going in right here. So here to show you guys in a little more of a close-up view what I mean, you can see all these bolts have about the same amount of space uh, when just kind of thrown in there, not threaded it in. And they all should stick out about that much. Here's like my thumbnail. So I'd say that's like a centimeter or so. Sorry if the focus is crappy, guys. But uh, yeah, I have all the case bolts uh, just kind of dropped in their holes. Now I'm gonna go in and start snugging these down with an eight millimeter socket on an extension. And this is a quarter inch ratchet. Uh, first, I'm not gonna use the ratchet, but I'm going to just take the socket here and snug all these bolts down. Make sure they all go down, but don't bottom out. Because if your bolt bottoms out before it kind of touches the case, then that bolt's probably too long to go in that hole. All right, now that all the bolts are snugged down, I'm just gonna get my quarter inch ratchet with an eight millimeter deep socket and extension and just kind of snug them all down, kind of going in a crisscross pattern. And uh, yeah, right now, basically, I'm just trying to get the cases seated a little tighter against each other. And I'm not gonna be doing the final tightening just yet. So I'm just gonna go through and snug everything down in a crisscross pattern. All right, now that we have everything snugged down, I'm gonna go through and do the final tightening, which I'm just gonna get it nice and snug with this quarter inch ratchet. Uh, if you want, you can get a quarter inch um, torque wrench and uh, torque all these down. But honestly, you just really gotta get them snug and just a tiny bit more. Uh, these bolts don't need a crap ton of torque on them. So uh, if you're gonna tighten these down without a torque wrench, uh, I just use a quarter inch ratchet and just kind of snug them up with your hands. No need to go too crazy. So now that we are all done uh, bolting these cases together, I'm gonna stand the engine kind of up and down and we're gonna test out the shafts just to make sure everything moves freely. 